In this tutorial, we're going to be covering how to add an, a Verdi biometric reader to your ACM system. Uh, a prerequisite before we're adding, we're going to add the door. We're going to go in and we're going to create two new card formats that the Verdi readers will use to read the fingerprints. So the, we're going to go into physical access and then card formats. The first card format that we're going to add is a 32-bit Verdi we're going to label it 32-bit underscore Verdi. Our card format is going to be Wiegand. We're not going to assign a uh, offset or facility code. We are going to assign the number of bits to be 32 and the card number length to be 32. And then it's important that you check the reverse card bytes checkbox. We're also going to be adding a 56-bit Avigilon biometric uh, option as well. So we're going to do 56-bit bio. Same thing, card type is going to be uh, Wiegand. The facility code on this is going to be the standard 858 for uh, a Vigilon I-Class cards. We're going to set the number of bits to 56, card number length once again to 56, and we are going to use the reverse card bytes checkbox. Now that we've got the card format successfully created, we can go back over to the physical access under doors and we can add our Verdi biometric door to the system. So we're going to click add door. Uh, if you are using version 512 or later, you will get this template notification if you have templates created in your system. We're going to actually not use a template to build this. So we'll cancel out of that and we're going to go ahead and label the door. So the reader I'm going to be adding is one of our AC2000 readers, so I'm labeling, labeling that accordingly. We're going to pick our vendor, which will be Mercury Security for my application, and then the panel that I've uh, already assigned. Uh, keep in mind, I have already created my panels, and I've gone in and I've also uh, pre-labeled my inputs, outputs, and readers to make it a little bit easier uh, for installation. So our access type, we're going to select single, the door mode, we're going to select card only. So the normal door mode for this uh, reader will be card only. This will allow you to read either fingerprint or card or both at the door. Uh, we're not going to check any of the door processing attributes for this exercise, uh, but you can use some of these options depending on your application. Go ahead and click Save. Uh, same thing here. We won't, we're not going to make any changes, but this will depend on your application. Well, the one thing you do want to make sure is that your card formats uh, the two new card formats that you created, the 32-bit Verdi and the 56-bit Bio, are both uh, enabled for your reader. So we'll go ahead and click Save again here. And then this will take us to the hardware page where we're going to go ahead and click our, select our reader. We're going to select our door position sensor, our Rex, and our Strike. We'll go ahead and save that. We're going to go back into hardware because at this point, the reader will not be online uh, because we need to change it from standard Wiegand D1, D0 to OSDP. So in the reader type, we're going to change this to custom. Under LED drive, we're going to drop down to the OSDP and then we're going to click save. And now the reader will be using OSDP versus standard Wiegand. We go back over to our doors listing page. We can see down here for our Verdi AC2000 that we're green and online. So a quick troubleshooting step. Although the process is the same for adding a door, whether it's an AC2000 or an AC5000, I wanted to show that the AC5000 does give you the uh, LCD readout. Uh, so if you're if you run into a situation where you are getting an OSDP disconnect at the reader, um, as you can see here, if I change the LED drive to none, the reader will give us an OSDP disconnect. So if you're seeing that out at a door, that means that you're actually getting, uh, that you're not using OSDP to communicate via, uh, from ACM to the reader itself. So you see, I get the OSDP disconnect here. If I go back into the reader and change it back to OSDP, and save it, 
within 10 seconds or so, the reader will come back online and the OSDP disconnect message will go away.